Basically, our main problem is we know things at a very, very small scale. We know, we know that the thing I sit on, it's made of atoms, I'm made of atoms, and then atoms are made from smaller bits. And we understand these very small bits very, very well. We have quantum field theory that works perfectly. And we know that the Earth turns around the Sun, the Sun turns around the center of the Milky Way, the Milky Way moves along the cosmos. All of that we understand very well. That's general relativity. The problem is when you try to think about things that are at the same time large enough to need gravity and small enough to be need quantum. So that could be if you have a very tiny, very heavy particle, for example, or something like the Big Bang, the origin of the universe. And at that point, we don't know how to describe it. We can't combine quantum field theory and gravity into one consistent theory. And that's the problem that I'm trying to answer with simulations. One night I went to the pub and met one of the professors from the college where I was at and she just convinced me that there's something to discrete space-time. At the beginning of the evening I was all, no, 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 space-time has to be smooth, differential structure, we need differential geometry and all these things. And the next morning I was standing in her office asking her for more references to the literature. And that's how it started. <laughs> okay, so what we would do is we discretize space-time. I'm actually working in different models, um, causal dynamical triangulations or causal set theory, but for the purpose of the Monte Carlo simulations it's all the same. We find a way to write down how a space-time a geometry would look in our discrete approach. Then we assign to each of these geometries an energy and we then can make up a rule that the lower the energy the more likely is the geometry. Now we have geometries that are discrete and we have an energy that we can assign to each geometry. The next thing we need is a Monte Carlo move. With this Monte Carlo move, we would move between the different geometries. So we make a small change in the geometry that leads to another geometry. And we need to come up with moves that allow us to move from one geometry to all other possible geometries. And if we have these moves, then we can just put it on the computer and let the computer randomly move among these geometries and um, the computer will then accept a new geometry if the energy is lower or if the energy is higher than the geometry you're at currently then it will well, it will re reject the geometry actually it won't totally reject it if you were totally rejected then you could get stuck somewhere like if you are at one point where the energy is lower than at all the surrounding points you would always stay there but you don't want that because Maybe you're here at a little valley up in the mountains and the true lowest energy would be once you're out of the mountains and into the flatland. So you have that even if the energy of the new geometry is higher than of the current geometry, you can still move there with a certain probability. And that's where the random numbers come in. I guess the best case scenario is if we found something in our small scale and then we could, could explain how it could how something similar could happen at a larger scale and then predict something that can be measured. I guess that's the best case. So yeah, best case would be we find something in the small scale that we can tell would also happen in large scales if our theory is correct and then we can go out and measure it at larger scales and say hey we predicted that now we measured it. Well that's the ultimate riddle of course. We have the very small scale and the very large scale and we have theories for that. But these theories are not consistent with each other. We can't use both theories at once because fundamentally they are not compatible. So the interesting question is, what happens when we try to make them compatible? Can we make them compatible? And of course that would be a big unification in physics. We want, we want to have equations that we can write down to explain the universe. We want to have everything beautifully explained in one go. Even if the explanation, as in quantum mechanics, is just statistical, we want to be able to explain things. And this gap that we can't uni unite these theories, that's, uh, I think that's why people are so interested. I mean, it's, it's a fundamental. What is space and time made of? Well, I'm doing what I always wanted to do. I'm trying to find out how the universe works. And even, even if these things that I'm doing are not maybe connected to reality, or maybe it turns out that I'm on the wrong way, I think, I think that doing the wrong way will still teach us a lot about things. Even the wrong way can teach us more about how space and time look.